Hello everyone, I hope you're well. Welcome. I thought I would create a card with my new release. So I'm starting with a piece of Pink Frog Smooth card. So it's three and a half inches by seven and a half inches. And then we've got a black mat, three and three quarters by seven and three quarters. And then a card blank, four by eight. So that's what we're working with. And it's all Pink Frog card. Now I'm going to be using my stamp release, my new stamp release, branded under my own name. <clears throat> And going forward, this is what everything will look like. And I'm so chuffed. I'm so chuffed. It's sort of the look I've been after. Um, it goes perfectly with my stamps and how I design. Uh, so I love the way it's all turned out. So I'm going to be working with my clematis or clematis or whichever you'd like to pr uh, pronounce it. It's a climber. It's a climbing plant. And... I'm just going to show you over time how versatile stamps are. Now, I'm about using simple ideas, simple techniques to bring together um, beautiful designs. I'm not about complicated ideas, but what is important to me is education and making sure that you get the best from your stamps and your purchases. It's really important to me. And going forward, I will be using these stamps a huge amount. These stamps will not be discontinued. They will always be in my line. So if you like collecting, whether one stamp, two stamps, you know, or you just like watching, that's absolutely fine. <clears throat> so I'm going to be using my new stamp and I am so excited. So everything will be branded under the Tracy Evans Boutique Designs brand. And... If you are looking for anything like my stamps and any other products that I add to my website, this is where you will find everything. And you will notice that I will add this link to everything. So it's www.tracyevansboutiquedesigns.com and you will see that everywhere. That is now where my products will be sold. So if you'd like to bookmark that page, um, and then you've got that whenever you need it. So everything will be branded in that way. So now let's get down to the nitty gritty. So I've got my piece of Pink Frog Smooth card and it is three and a half inches by seven and a half inches. Now it's hilarious because I got so excited that I've got paints out, I've got no inks out, I'm just all over the place. But hey ho. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some inks. So let's grab some Wilted Violet and Villainous Potion. What about Shaded Lilac? Yes, Shaded Lilac. So we'll go with some purples. So let's just move these out of the way. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use the clematis, clematis. I'm going to use this floral here, which can be used in any direction. So you can have it going down like this. You can have it going up like that. You can have it going like this. You know, it's like it is on the packaging. It's entirely up to you. Now, I'm going to be using my Versamark ink clear. So I just need to make sure that that stamp has not got any wet ink on there. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to use some low-tack tape. So let's take some low-tack tape. I use Scotch low-tack tape. And going forward, you're not going to see me rushing any videos. So I'm just removing a little bit of that, that tackiness. I know it says it's magic tape, it's removable, but I still put my fingers all over it just to reduce that tackiness a little bit more. And what I'm going to do is just place the low tack tape at the top and then we'll just cut again. I have to turn the end over because it drives me mad if I lose the end. And then let's remove some of that tackiness again. I'm so excited, I need to calm myself down and just think about what I'm doing. All right. So then we're going to place this at the bottom, like so. 
Now, if I lift these up, which is always a bit difficult. Where's my scissors? Let me grab my little scissors. So just take my scissors. There we go. And the only reason I'm lifting this up is so you can see what kind of border I'm sort of adding. So just down the bottom and the top. So you could do it that way if you wanted, but we're going, are we going that way or are we going that way? Do you like how I can't make my mind up? It looked nice both ways. So we could do it different ways and do different colour techniques. Right, so we've got the low tack tape on there, like so. And now I'm going to take my stamp. So I've got my Versamark ink. So we'll take the, now what we haven't done which I knew there's a reason. I'd got some copier paper. Now, those of you that have got masking sheets, then use your masking sheets. They will work beautifully because your masking sheets will just give you edge to edge masking. I haven't got any masking sheets, but sometimes I like to show that I don't have everything. I should really buy some masking sheets, but I keep saying that continually. So I'm terrible. So we'll just stamp that onto a piece of copier paper. And obviously with your masking sheets, because they're sticky, it will stick on there and it won't move. It's a little bit more difficult if you're using copier paper, but you know me. So let's just cut that out. And now if you want to skip stages, you can just fast forward, but my videos are going to be warts and all and showing sort of all the steps, mainly because sometimes uh, newcomers to the craft get forgotten and we sometimes skip over areas that they perhaps need to see. So I think that is really important. So what I'm doing now is I'm cutting this out of copier paper to make my mask. So we'll just go around like so. And this is a lovely sort of easy floral to cut out. Nothing complicated at all. But because it's a mask, I'm going right up to the line because it's a mask. So let's just... And what we'll do is I'll probably, not in this video, I'm only going to create one card in this video, but in future cards, we'll show you how we can just, you know, use it in different ways. And now, you see, I was going to do the end, but I'm like, I can't make my mind up. Oh, I'm terrible, aren't I? just there we go. so what we're doing this time is so I'll show you varying ideas even with the same colors They were just cutting out just to make a lovely mask. And so easy to cut out and it's a lovely size. There we go. So I've just created my little, little mask out of copier paper. Now, if you created that out of your masking sheets, you would get edge to edge adhesion and that would make it a lot easier for you. <clears throat> and I don't know how many times I'm going to say I should buy myself some. I just don't know how many times I'm going to say that because I'm just terrible. Right. So what I'm going to do is take this copy of paper and just take my stamp. And you saw me ink with black ink. So I'm just going to use my copy of paper just to remove some of that black ink. Because what you don't want to do is go to your Versamark ink pad 
and put this black ink on there. You know, you want to, I say keep it as clean as possible, but trust me, mine isn't clean. And I'll tell you why it isn't clean, because we all make mistakes and we'll leave the black ink on there and they go in with our clean Versamark ink. Come on, let's be honest. Right, so what I'm going to do now <coughs> is ink my stamp with my Versamark ink. Now, I've got a mask, but we might not necessarily need it. I haven't got my heat tool out, which is about standard practice. And the reason I've just inked that a little bit more is that the stamp is new. So you can look at your packaging if you want to see which way I've added it, but you don't have to use it that way. So what I'm going to do is just add that clematis image, clematis, Whichever you prefer to pronounce it, it doesn't matter. Same thing. So I'm just going to add the ink. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to press. I'm not going to break my wrists. I'm just going to allow that ink, just that sticky ink. The sticky ink allows you to emboss, etc. on there. And you can do different techniques as well. So I'm just going to allow that just to soak on there. And just soak a little bit longer. And you can see, can you see that it's got some blackness to it? Let's get the heat tool. Now, if you were a beginner, you might panic about that because you've got that blank, black staining to it. But it's nothing to worry about at all. So the only downside to having low tack tape on here is obviously lifting your card up. There we go. So I'm now going to use some detail white embossing powder. And we're just going to sprinkle the white embossing powder. I'm going to be honest, my embossing powder is not the best either. So then you've got that white embossing over there. So now I'm going, I'm doing everything, warts and all, and all on purpose. So you saw me there take off the ink by just stamping it onto this copy of paper. You saw me take off the excess ink. Now you know that I don't clean my stamps when I use the Versamark. There's no need. Now, when you're doing something like this, Obviously, if your stamp's been in the packaging overnight and it's had that black ink on, it's going to be completely dry. What I'm trying to show you is, obviously, I just used the black ink about a couple of minutes ago. So then you get a slightly black tinge. So when you're doing something like that, I would recommend that you just give your stamp a little bit of a clean. Especially if, like me, you've just this second stamped with black. That's the only time or when you've used oxides, that I would recommend you remove some of that ink, particularly if it's wet. That's all I'm saying. Right. Now, the reason I'm doing videos, warts and all, like I've always done, but more so under my own, own branding, is because these things get forgotten. And then if a newcomer comes along and they see a slightly black tinge, they think they've done it wrong. And it isn't wrong, it's just getting into good practices, that's all. That's what I'm trying to show you. Also, it's not easy to pick this up, there we go. The other thing you need to get into is when you're embossing, don't go with your heat tool straight to the card because all you're doing is you're using a cold heat tool that's going to do nothing. So to save you just holding the heat tool on the card for ages, just heat the heat tool up. Now, you will get some people that will heat from the top and you will get some people that say they like to heat from the bottom because it gives a smoother... There's some embossing on there. Because it gives a smoother feel. Me, personally, I can hardly see any difference, so I don't bother. I like to do it from the top, mainly because if me, personally, if I do it from the bottom... I'm going to be honest with you, I burn my fingers. So for me, no. So 
let's just so what we're going to do I've changed my mind we're going to do two different styles of card using this stamp just because I want to okay so you've got your beautiful clematis clematis on there just so you can see that now you can see that yes we had that black ink on there oh, I've got nowhere to put my heat tool but because we've embossed in that white which is opaque it doesn't make any difference but just showing you some things that you might like to consider right now I could probably add um masking so that I could mask off that area but if I do it if I just do it quite right I can probably do it without a mask so I'm going to ink up the stamp again which you can't see so I'm going to ink that stamp again and it's just beautiful because it's one of those stamps you can just change the direction really easily so just give that a really good inking and it's difficult I'm going to have to put it down because it feels alien to me to hold that up and ink the stamp now I can see you probably can't see but I can see exactly where I'm stamping I can turn this now clematis it's clematis clematis they don't all look the same way so just turn it so it's facing a different way as well so let's just add that and I embossed the first one so I could see where I was going now you saw me clean that stamp didn't you look how much that black ink is on there and this is why we use versifying clear ink because it has a good open time it stays wetter longer so you can see now I've turned the clematis the other way because it'll give it a different flow and feel to the card. Okay. Now, there's another thing I should always tell you. If you've got a piece of card that you've got in your drawer, we all have them, where it says a piece of card you randomly cut and then you suddenly decide you want to use it. Be aware that if you've handled that card quite a lot, be aware that 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 card could have your little greasy paw prints on there so if you think that's that's the case then make sure you use your anti-static bag so let's move this round a little bit more so play around with it a little bit you don't have to have the whole flower you can just have part of the flower just play around with your image a little a little bit just see look at that look at the black on that and you've seen me clean it so but when your stamp has been in the cupboard overnight you don't have to worry about it because it's the ink is completely dry so what we'll do now let me just is we will no we will carry on Normally I would say heat that, but I think we can get away with that now. So we're now going to take again, and I've moved it round in different ways. So what I'm trying to show you is, you don't have to have complicated ideas to have beautiful effects. Let's just ink this up. Obviously... You know, if you're one of those ladies or gentlemen that like fast videos, you can fast forward over the bits that don't interest you. So let's have... So I'm trying to move my stamp around just so that each time I stamp it, it looks a little bit different. So what I'm showing you is that I'm sort of creating a background or a card as a whole. So it's ju I just love doing things like this. And I'm using the All in a Create acrylic blocks just to give me that leverage. Look at that, still the black on there. So this goes to show you how open 
that Versa Fine Claire is, how long it stays wet for. So we've then got that on there. So you can see the, the sort of pattern I'm building up. So you can see that beautifully. But I can see that I've got like little areas here. It doesn't mean you have to use the whole flower. So let's take that again. And let's just use part of the flower so that oh, let's put that there so i'm just using sort of part of the petal just to add parts of the petal just to that that background there we go so i've got parts of the petal there And the reason, I mean, obviously you could sprinkle it all in one go. The reason I'm sprinkling it sort of a bit at a time is I can see exactly then what I've got and what I need to add to the page. There is a bit of embossing there that I don't want. And this is why you use your anti-static bag. If you use your anti-static bag, you will only get the embossing where you've added the sticky ink so let's just do i want that there do i want a little bit there no i don't think i do right let's let's heat that up and let's see what that looks like so again grab your heat tool and allow that just to heat up now, what I love about this is on this stamp set, I've also added you a little clematis flower head that you can also create a smaller ditzy kind of background with. So we'll just heat that up and let's turn the card around. So we'll just heat. If you heat your heat tool up, for one, it means you're not sort of holding it against the card too long as well either. And once it starts turning to that glossy white, move your card so that you don't hit the same area over and over again. Because you don't want to affect the first one that you've embossed but as I said you could stamp all in one go now you've seen the video and just emboss all in one go but I did it a little bit at a time just to see where my first image was And then what I tend to do is I turn this round and I end up sort of you turn it like this just to just to see if your your card is all glossy. It actually looks lovely. So if you try this on parchment, it would look delightful. Again, another idea I will try. But that's what happens. Once you do, sort of do one card, it sparks off another idea. So stop saying so, Tracy. What I want to do is just make sure that that card is now no longer got any heat in there. You don't want it to have heat in there. So I'm going to grab my brayer that's for inks. I've got a brayer for paints and a brayer for inks. You do not need that. That is a luxury. The reason I've got one for paints and inks is the paints one gets a bit textural when you have loads of paints on it, if you don't clean it every time like me, it gets lots of texture on it. And I don't want that texture when I'm using my inks. That's all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it this way just because it makes it a bit easier for me to bray it. Or does it? Do I want to go up and down? Across? No, we'll go that way. It's like I can't make my mind up. Let's move all the stamps out of the way. And let's bring in our ink pad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the lightest first, which is pretty, pretty dire that that one is the shaded lilac i have got another one let's 
let's find the other shaded lilac. I'm sure I've got another one. There we go. It's always in the drawer that you, the last drawer that you go to, isn't it? That one looks a bit sort of battered. I still keep my dry ink pads because sometimes they're perfect for direct to paper techniques. That's better. So I'm using my shaded lilac distress oxide. And what I'm going to do is take my brayer. So I'm taking my brayer and adding lots of that ink. Move your brayer along just so that you get plenty of that ink on there. So you've got plenty of that ink on there. Now, with your brayer, don't panic. So all you're going to do with your low tack tape on there is sort of use a flicking motion. Sort of flick your brayer. It's like a wheelie. So just flick it. Don't go like that really hard. Flick it oh, and take your... <laughs> I've never had that happen. Look at this. The low tack tape is so low tack that it's come off. Let's place that back. Let's place that back. I tell you what, that low tack tape is looking rather nice as well. So don't go over like that. Sort of go over like I've been and just flick your ink. Just flick that ink. Take a little bit more ink and you think the ink is not hardly on there. Keep going over with your wheelie, as I call it, just wheelie over there. Wheelie, 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 wheelie. So just wheelie over your card and keep going over because you think there's no ink on here. So if I just get, let's get this copier paper. And if I go over the copier paper and press hard, you won't see it in camera, but to my eye, there's actually quite a lot of ink on there. So that's why you keep going over, sort of wheeling, doing a wheelie over there. So just add a little bit more ink and then go and add your sort of wheelie technique. OK, the only reason that this flicked off is because I caught the edge of here. That's all. So. So we've got our shaded lilac. Now let's go to wilted violet. Now, wilted violet, my ink pad, is very juicy and very rich. So what I'm going to do is just look how little colour there is on there and look at the lines on there. Doesn't matter. Start off your card and then come in. And what you do is you don't panic. What you do is you keep wheeling over. Okay? Don't panic, keep wheeling over to smooth that ink out. Don't panic. And you see this ink on here. If you go back to that ink and keep coming back in, you'll keep picking up that ink. So don't panic. So you're just doing that ink again. So a little bit more ink, like so. And then come to this side. Let me bring this in so you can see. Come to this side. Start off here. Way off your card. And then bring it in. Way off your card. And then bring it in. So don't panic too much. Okay. Now, the still. So if you've got a spare piece of card, let's just grab any piece of card. This will do. It's just a square piece of card. You could then have a spare piece of card and bray it, the excess ink off there. Now look how much ink is on there. And you could still use the ink off your non-stick craft sheet and bring that to your spare piece of card because then you create another background. You can then spritz this with water and mop up that ink as well. So you could mop that up onto a spare piece of card. So there's always opportunities to create extra backgrounds. I'm just grabbing a piece of kitchen roll just to remove a little bit of that moisture. So then bring in our card and let's go now to the darkest colour, which is Villainous Potion. So we'll take our Villainous Potion again, start here. Start doing your wheelie here and then bring the dark colour in and do your wheelie. 
you're flicking it lift flick flick lift flick lift so a little bit of that dark color off the page come in flick lift so it's a little little wheelie that you're doing and keep brayering that color over don't sort of you know um move from that too quickly so let's now bray some of this dark color on here you can pick up some of the dark color off here and just add that to your card i can use that for a background i never waste anything might wipe that up and there's still quite a bit of ink on there so you could quite easily have mopped that up onto another piece of card what i'm going to do then is use my spritzer bottle i'm going to place the water in my hand and i'm just going to flick oops without flicking the camera that's a good start isn't it just flick that water on there try not to flick the camera not a good good idea and what i'm going to do is just allow that to do its thing those distress oxides a pigment dye fusion are reactive with water so we'll allow that just to do its thing. And don't be too impatient. You can see it's reacting. Now, the longer you leave that sitting, the longer it reacts. So we'll just leave that on one side for the moment. So what I'm going to do now is take my lovely stamp again and a scrap piece of card. Let me I can't pick it up, it doesn't matter what I say. Scrap piece of card and I can never pick a scrap piece of card up. Or it's just not quite thick enough. There we go. So I'm now going to take my scrap piece of card and I'm going to ink. What am I going to ink with? Which one? I'm going to ink with Wilted Violet. So take... that wilted violet and now I can decide which way that I want that um, clematis clematis it you, doesn't matter you can have it any which way you want but I'm going to have mine there I can't decide whether I'm having it in that in the purple or for oh, look at that no line coloring would help if you actually did it and inked the whole stamp up, Tracy. So I'm using the oxides. Let's use the other side of the card. We'll fit it on there. Waste not, want not. Because when you cut it out, you can turn it any which way you would like. So let's just... What I'm trying to show you is that you can use simple techniques to get beautiful results. So it doesn't matter which way you stamp it, you can turn it whichever way you want. It doesn't matter whichever way you want that clematis. It's absolutely fine, whichever way you want it. So what, <coughs> what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a little bit of colouring. I keep saying I'm going to treat myself to some brushes as well, but I've had that much to do. I haven't done it yet. So I've got this Villainous Potion here. Let's take a little bit of this Villainous Potion. But what I need to do first is make sure that that brush is clean. And I've, it's funny because I've actually got purples on there, so that's rather apt. And I'll just wipe that up, take a little bit of that excess off. If you buy brushes that are a little bit more expensive to keep their point which is rather handy when you're doing things like this i don't think i've got an even finer brush have i look at this this is a fine brush no idea how old these brushes are but this is a, a, a nice fine brush as well lovely so i'm going to pick up that villainous potion and you can see I'm trying to not use too much water and just add 
a little bit of that dark just to the clematis. And I'm going to keep a little bit of the, the white area as well. But just going to add a little bit of that colour. Now, obviously, I've stamped with the oxides. So that will react as well. That I've stamped with. But I just want to add a little bit of the darkness. And you can blend some of the colour out as well that's on there just to give a little bit of a lighter contrast. But you can see I'm not going with too much water. Too much water is where you go wrong. Everything, it just all floods. So just be a little bit patient. So pick up the villainous potion, take off the excess moisture, and just add a little bit of that dark. So I'm, I'm sort of starting with the darkest here. So I'll pick up that, no more water, and just add a little bit of that dark area. So just pick up that. So instead of black lining, you know, the black lines with a black ink pad. I'm using the purple just to give me a bit of a different look. That's all. But what I'm trying to show you is that it's it's lovely because it makes it look a little bit different. So I can use my water now, which will then become a wash of the same colour. Take off the excess and just blend out the oxide that is already on there just to give you a light tinge of the same colour just to sort of colour that out pick up a little bit more water so each time I don't drown the card with the water I just take it nice and steady let me show you what I've got so far just so I take that nice and steady when I do that. It's not too, doing too much. So I'm then going to take a little bit more of that Villainous Potion, which is, in my case, is the really dark colour. So pick up that Villainous Potion, and I've not got too much water on there, and I can tell I've not got too much water on there because it's not beading. So I'm just adding a few sort of darker elements especially where this I'm just making it a little bit darker and I'm sort of going very carefully just adding the darker areas now in my garden I used I don't think I've got it anymore I used to have a clematis that was a very, very, actually, I think I still have got it. A very, very dark, dark purple. Really deep purple. So much so, it was like velvet. Um, And it's just gorgeous. But for me, I can never remember the name of every single clematis because there's so many clematis types. It's just difficult to remember them all. So what I'm going to do now is take some Wilted Violet, which is my next colour down. And I'm just going to add a little bit of that colour. Just to bring a little bit more depth. Now again, you can see I'm not adding too much water. And when it gets really pale, it's almost automatically just like the shaded lilac at the end. So just taking that out to nothing. So a little bit of water. And then I'm just using the wilted violet just to add sort of a second colour. Like you would with your pencils. And then blending it out 
to almost nothing. And again, let's pick up a little bit of the wilted violet. Pick up a bit of water if it's getting too dry and then just blend that out. It is a good idea just to just to keep some areas a little bit paler, just to give that definition. So what I'm going to do then is just give this a little quick dry. Because if I dry it, it means I can add another layer. There we go. I can just then add another layer of my Villainous Potion. A little tiny bit of water. I've always got this kitchen roll by my side that I just touch. And I can see that's quite wet, so just take a little bit off. And then I'm just going to add a little bit more of that darkness. So what I'm doing is, because I've dried it, I can layer this on the top. Just to make a little bit darker. And I can use a little bit of water just to, just to blend everything out so that it's not too, dark, uh, too all one tone. Don't forget, we're going to use our white pen as well. So let's just give that a little bit of a dry. And when we cut it out and leave a white border, that is also going to make it pop as well. There's no point to add, trying to add any white when your project is wet. That's just not going to work. So I'm just going to just add, you see, the point we have to remember, let's just clean our mess up. I keep thinking, oh, I knew I'd got a wipe out somewhere. Let's move that out, move that out of the way. So you could brayer that up and add it to your card again. Now I've got this Bleed Proof White by Dr. P.H. Martins, which exactly does what it says on the tin. It means it's bleed proof. It means that the oxides won't react. So I'm just using a fine brush just to give me A few sort of white highlights and because I'm using this bleed proof you could add a little bit of water so it makes the spread a little bit easier let's just take that out just to give me a few white highlights now why am I not using the gel pen? Well, the gel pen, because of the moisture in the gel pen, it then reacts with the oxide, but this is bleed proof. So the color doesn't bleed in to the paint, it doesn't bleed into it. So it doesn't bleed into the purple. So it works rather nicely. Just to give you a few white highlights. So 
so you can see concentration is taking over with Tracy because it's just I'm doing everything very delicately delicately and losing myself but that's me all over I'm just adding a little bit more of the white just to make things pop a little bit more now when your card is completely dry you can go over with your gel pen but i'm going to add splatters anyway so it doesn't matter too much but it just makes it pop a little bit more so i just like that so you can just add a few sort of touches of white but don't don't sort of punish yourself too much because it doesn't matter you're going to add splatters anyway not that i can put the lid on this let's just i'm knocking everything over now right let's cut our clematis out but this time I'm going to leave a white border because it just, it will make everything sing. Now, if you don't like to use the oxides, don't worry. But this video is about just embracing if you haven't got many products. But if you've got all your beautiful pens, pencils, you can, you can use those. we can then just do something else as well which we will do after but I just want to show you how versatile stamps really are I just think it's important just to show how wonderful they really are so I'm just leaving a narrow white border. And that narrow white border really does make everything pop. Now, if you've got <coughs> your black pencils, anything like that, I've just got a black biro type pen, you can also go in and just add, I'll make sure that's working, yeah. You can just add a little bit of detail with your black pen as well. So what I'm trying to show you is, there's always ways to make your stamps look just that little, little bit different. Just because my packaging shows you that sort of stamped in black doesn't mean it has to look like that. Not at all. So I'm just adding a little sort of touch of the black just to add a little bit more detail so it's showing you how you can take it up each time right, let's move this out of the way I keep saying that about everything let's move this out of the way and they've got to load so much stuff everywhere it's ridiculous so what i'm going to do now is remove my low tack tape and you can see how the white is on there it looks lovely that would sort of be a lovely kind of 
washy just with the white. Wouldn't it look lovely on the parchment? Oh, yes, it would. So what we're going to do then is let's just nearly forgot then. Let's take our kitchen roll and just add a little bit of water to the kitchen roll. And what we're going to do is just sort of clean up our clematises a little bit. You're going to clean them up a little bit. It's the only cleaning I'm going to do today. So just take a little bit of water, use a clean area and just clean up your clematises. There we go. Just so you can see that, just clean those up. Now, this is the clematis that's then going to stand up against that because this is my background. However, let's just carry on. Let's grab another scrap of card. I'm trying to make sure I actually use all my scraps of card. So we'll take the clematis again. But before we stamp it, do you remember the bit one that I cut out of copier paper? I love doing this. If you're not sure how something's going to look, what I like to do is just use my copier paper. So that one is going to sort of lift up. But when I add sort of a black one underneath, it gives me some contrast. So that's what we're going to do. So have one cut out just so you can play around like you would a jigsaw puzzle. So let's take our Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. And just stamp again. You can stamp your image however you would you would like to stamp it in whichever sort of direction you want to stamp it in and just and as always when you're stamping don't be in too much of a rush if you lift this up straight away you're not giving time for that ink to absorb onto the surface of the card but because we've got that Versafine Claire Nocturne ink as you saw before it has a good open time which means it stays wetter longer And the advantage of that is you get a beautiful image like this. Just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And what I always recommend, I keep using the same piece of copy, but it's got uh, embossing on, but just blot it a little bit, especially if you're going to cut out and especially more so if it's a new ink pad. Just give that a blot so that when I cut that out, I'll keep my fingers away from the clematis. Let's just... And again, I'm still leaving a white border just so that that pops. really nicely it's also sometimes a little difficult for me to keep the photo, the piece that I'm cutting in camera because it's an automatic instinct for me to want to bring the piece of card closer to my body so just be aware, you know, I know that you don't cut out with it six foot away from your body like I'm doing here. But I just want you to see this in camera because a couple of times I have got carried away in video and I've pulled it towards my body and you can't see me cutting out. But that's because it's just natural for me to do that. use a smaller piece of card and what I mean by that is you don't have too much card around 
whilst you're cutting it makes it far easier and move your card rather than your scissors that also makes it easy and i nearly pulled it in towards me then again just natural instinct there we go so now i've got my card and that black it then really sort of pops against there right now i have got my black cotton and apparently a couple of ladies told me on my youtube that i don't know whether it's under here there are ridges on your cotton that you can put this on where's the ridges then do you know sometimes i am oh yeah is that it there are ridges on your cotton that allow you to keep the end and tracy's looking for these ridges and i'm like a eh? <laughs> you meant to where's the ridges then i can't see no ridges <laughs> apparently they said there's ridges at the top of your cotton or at the bottom and you can trap your thread or is it that like sort of they're going to be shouting at me oh it's like that is it like that so you've got these ridges and then you've always got, oh yes, then you've always got your cotton. You can pull it out. Oh, I've just pulled that out of camera. So yeah, so, oh, you learn something. New. Oh, now I'm getting carried away. You learn something new every day. So if you keep the end, you've then got that ridge at the top of your cotton or the bottom and you can then leave the cotton out and you won't always lose it. Thank you, ladies. You learn something new every day. So... I'm still not doing it very easy though. Oh, that's it. There you go. Then you don't lose the end. Look. Yay! You learn something new every day. Small things and use small minds, but there you go. So we're going to have this cotton, but not yet. I got too excited by that, as you could see. Uh, let's have a little uh, brush that I can do my splatters with. So I'm going to take my bleed proof white. And just well, that brush is a bit pathetic just take a little bit of that you can add this to a little paint palette and then just reactivate it if you wish so let's add a little bit of that water and let's add some of those white splatters i love white splatters it just makes it vibrant But obviously these are sort of lighter flicks compared to when you flick your Posca pen. My favourite flicks are with the Posca pen, but you should know that by now. Well, that's not bad, actually. So I'm just adding lots of white flicks there you go now what you need to be aware with this bleed proof is just make sure that you clean your brush because look at that wow look at all that white in there so just make sure your brush is clean which you know i'm really bad at let's move that way <laughs> the only difference i find i'm moving everything now the only difference i find with the bleed proof compared to my Posca pen. My Posca pen splatters where I want it to. The bleed proof goes all over my ink pad <laughs> and all over my stamps. Hey ho, they're meant to be used. Right, let's move that. Right, so I've got my lovely background. I just adore that. We really shouldn't put wet cotton on there, Luke. It's absolutely soaking wet. 
but I'm going to do it anyway. You should have known I was going to say that. So a little bit of that. Let's grab our pin flare glue. Now I love using my pin flare glue, but if you don't want to use pin flare, just use your pads, etc. And we're just going to add our lovely clematis. Now it's just making my mind up which way I want it. You can look at your packaging for ideas of placement or whatever. But I'm going to place that one there. Just gives it a contrast. And then look how different it looks when you've done it in the purple against look against the black oh, i just love them absolutely love it so let's add so with the pin flare i can add a blob then i can add another blob and another blob if i want and then just you do know that I'm just going to faff for England. Make sure that you do press it down a little bit, because sometimes I've not pressed it down enough, and then you, it doesn't really adhere to the card, just so that you can see that. Oh, love, love, love. I just love it. I'm all invigorated and excited about my hobby. So just now... <clears throat> I'm going to splatter with the Posca pen just because it's a habit and I adore it. I just love the splatters they give. Right, so I'm using my Posca pen. Look how well used it is. Just love these. Now, if you don't, if you're not a card maker, well, don't make the card. Add it to a journal and you've got it something to look back on. And you just don't use the pin flare. Just stick them down flat and then it can go in your journal. Right, let's grab our next bit. Where's my... Nobody knows where my stamp is in all this. So let's bring my stamp in. And if you bring the packaging in. So this is Clematis TE5. I love my little labels. Uh, and I can add some of these words now if I want. So let's take... Shall we take Clematis? Clematis. I better pronounce it both ways because, you know... Somebody might mention to me that it's not clematis, it's clematis. It's not clematis, it's clematis. It doesn't matter. It's whatever you want it to be. Okay. Let's take that. And I definitely don't need a, such a huge acrylic block, but hey-ho. You do realise I'm going to have to have a go with one on parchment. Lovely. And I can't wait to try different colour schemes as well. That's going to make me really happy. Scissors. Cut that out. And what I've shown you here is take your time. Don't worry about mistakes. Embrace them. And you can use minimal project products and you can still get a beautiful result. So I'm just going to add a little faux black matte with my Posca pen. And it's easier to do this on your non-stick craft sheet because you can see where you're going. White on white isn't doesn't make it easy to see where you're adding that line, but you know just saves me cleaning up so I've got a little little faux black mat on there and just decide where you want it I just love the clematis there so I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive oh I've got stuff everywhere Take this, and I'm just going to add a little bit of adhesive on that side. Now, I know this one was playing me up a bit earlier, so I'm just going to add that 
just sort of there. Just give it, you see, just give it a few moments. Can you see it trying to move? Just let the adhesive, the Nouveau adhesive grab hold. There you go. You just have to, it's just a bit of patience. So you can see just there, just lovely, absolutely lovely. Okay, we are going to add another element. Um, first of all, let's put this on our black mat because it'll instantly pop. Let's see if I can get this adhesive to work. Now, you've had moisture on there, so make sure you add enough adhesive to, to sort of all parts of the, the background, just so that it grabs hold. And just pick that card up and just move it slightly. But look how that pops against that black background now. Just glorious. And then when we add it to our four by eight inch white card, let's add it to that. Just add it to that. I sort of get one end on the card and then I can just maneuver it a little bit. This has got a quick grab, so it does grab relatively quickly, the adhesive. That's it. Let's just remove that. And then I'm just going to grab one more element. She says, have I got the stamps here? Yeah. Now I've got these little birds here, which is on my New Beginnings stamp TE4. And I've got two. I've got one with a little fern on that matches. So there's this bird here has got a little fern on that matches this fern here, which I just adore. So we'll just, let's have a look at this little, little black bird here. Just so you can see that, that's the black bird, as in it's coloured black. Right, let's just, let's see if we've got enough. Oh yes, plenty. Uh, is that my new ink pad? Let's take our little bird. Now I've put enough on these stamps so that not only have you got sentiments and focal images, you've also got embellishment pieces as well. And just so you can see our little beard. Oh, love him. Absolutely love him. So I'm going to leave a little white border because it makes me happy. Now he's nice and scribbly and tufty and... That's how he's meant to be. I just... Now, you never know, next time when I have a release, I might only have one stamp, just so it's one stamp that goes with all these, or it might be just a background. I'm not going to sort of overpower you, but you can rest assured I am going to be using these loads. I'm going to show you how often and how easily you can use them in so many projects. Oh, I just love this little beard. Well, you know me by now. You know I'm all about nature. I'm all about flowers. I'm all about backgrounds. 
I'm not going to change now. That's who I am. Just There we go. So we've got our lovely beard. Now, somewhere on here is my gel pen. That's a joke because I can hardly see it. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit. Oh, that's hopeless. And I'm just going to add a little bit of white here and there. Just that's better. Just to give a few little white touches to my beard. And it says calm and peace. Adore, adore, adore. So I'm just, I'm, at, I'm just going to add him. Let me just... I don't want to hide the word, so I just want him there. So I need my pin flare. Let me just make sure I don't want him there. Coming out and sort of tucked under. I'm going to keep moving the flowers. Mm. Now, so, and I want him here. But you do realise I'm going to do it three times before I even decide where he's going. So I could have him there looking at them florals. Or I could have him here with my... Now I like him there. So I've bent him a little bit just so that he looks like he's looking at the florals. There we go. Let me just push that up. And what we'll do in another video is use the clematis again in a different colour scheme. But just look at that. Just absolutely. Let's just so you're not too. Can you tell all my things are not dry yet? So they are going to move a little bit. That's just standard. And it's going to take me ages now just to get that how I want it. There we go. That's it. And I'm so happy with that. Let me just move that because I want the calm and the peace straight. I just adore it. But you've got lots of techniques there because the background, you could have just left it like that with the word clematis on and nothing else. It's to work beautifully. But I just love it. And I will be back soon with another video with the clematis again. Love to all and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.